Everyone loves a good cup of coffee, but what if I were to tell you when it comes to pain, we want as little as possible? Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Michael Mash, and welcome to episode seven of Whiteboard Wednesday. <laughs> Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and if you're on YouTube, hit the alert notification. So when it comes to pain, pain is a multifactorial experience, meaning that there are so many things that can affect somebody's pain experience. And we can use the coffee cup analogy to explain this a little better. I was exposed to this analogy by a guy named Greg Lehman, and it's been used in the literature uh, by Adrian Lau. So I want to give credit where credit is due. I did not come up with this, but I'm pretty dang good at explaining it. So. How much coffee is in your cup? If we look at all of the different factors that can contribute to pain, think of that as coffee inside of a cup. So look at all these things. It may be hard to see because it's small print, but I'm gonna go through all of them. Everything, all these words that you see in this coffee mug or coffee cup can be contributing factor to pain. Job dissatisfaction. There's evidence that shows that there is a correlation between one's job dissatisfaction and low back pain, believe it or not. The triple threat, stress, anxiety, depression. When you have stress, anxiety, depression that you're currently having trouble coping to, it can also increase the amount of coffee in your cup. And what happens when you have too much coffee in your cup? The coffee overflows and you have a, a pain experience, right? So all of these things, when they are combined, cause too much coffee, overflow, pain experience. So we talked about job dissatisfaction, stress, anxiety, depression. Let's get to some more of the biomechanical issues. Look what's also in here, joint changes. So we don't wanna slide this pain science thing too far to saying that it's only psychosocial. There are biomechanical factors that can contribute to pain and contribute to the amount of coffee in your cup. So joint changes, uh, significant joint arthritis, rotator cuff tears, right? While these don't by themselves equal pain, they can contribute to the amount of coffee in the cup and can contribute to a possible pain experience. Limited tissue tolerance. We know this as physical therapists, strength coaches, personal trainers. We know that when somebody has limited tissue tolerance that it can contribute to a pain experience as well as poor work capacity. This is big, false beliefs about pain. Think about this one. Having a false belief about pain in and of itself can contribute to a pain experience. Why? Because false beliefs can keep your system sensitized. For, for example, if you have this idea, let's say you have one-sided low back pain, right? Right on that SI joint. But you have this false belief that the SI joint can go in and out. It can lead to you being afraid to move there, being afraid to load there, and keep your brain hyper aware of that area. And we know that a hyper awareness can contribute to chronic pain. So if you have false beliefs about pain, it can keep pain lingering around. False beliefs can then lead to fear of movement, otherwise known as kinesiophobia. When you're afraid to move, that can keep the area also sensitized and contribute to the coffee in your cup and can contribute to a pain experience. So you have too much of this coffee, it overflows. So that leaves only two ways to reduce pain, right? So we either reduce the amount of coffee in the cup, right? Mindfulness techniques to work on stress, anxiety, depression, encouraging people to move despite it being painful. So getting, reducing kinesiophobia, removing false beliefs, all these things can reduce the amount of coffee in your cup, change pain without ever doing a single exercise, a physiological exercise, physical exercise, or doing anything, anything at all physically. So this is why we always try and say that, hey, just because you're weak doesn't mean you're in pain. You can still change pain without doing exercise. That being said, I'm not advocating to not do exercise for pain. I'm just saying that pain can be modulated by other means. Which brings me to the second point. You can either reduce the contents of the cup, reduce the coffee in the cup, or build a bigger cup. How do we build a bigger cup? Strength train, aerobic work. That helps build your tolerance to these stressors, builds a bigger cup, so it can allow you to have more coffee before it overflows. Think about that, right? So you can either reduce the amount of coffee in your cup or build a bigger cup. So build your tolerance to these stressors. So 
it's not an either or. It's not just strength train, aerobic train, and don't worry about all these contents, or just work on all kind of mindfulness techniques, get better sleep, but don't ever strength train or aerobic train. It's a one-two punch. So we're in the business of building bigger cups and reducing the amount of contents in it. As mentioned in the beginning, this is the only time it's good to have a big cup with a little bit of coffee. So that's how we try to explain pain as a multidimensional experience. Work on self-management techniques, work on coping strategies to reduce your stress, anxiety, depression, encourage people to move, educate people about false beliefs about pain, and then build the hell out of your cup by strength training and aerobic training. That's how you do it. Thanks for watching this episode of Whiteboard Wednesday.